So here we go. As you can see, this guy's got a lot of a lot of videos up here. We've got some really good ones. We got oh, he reacted to Joe Biden calling for a new world order. We've got him talking about Antichrist. We've got him raging about the Babylon Bee. We have a Christian dad review of Turning Red. Do we want to watch a Christian dad review of Turning Red? Oh my God. Has Prager you gone woke? I'm telling you. And guess what else we have? The craziest thing about all of this is that this guy has documentaries on his channel. He did conspiracy theory documentaries called Third Adam. He has a series of videos in which he talks about his, basically his prophecies. Third Adam, Missionary Spencer Smith. Third Adam 2, The Great Seduction. Third Adam 3, Rise of the Divine Feminine. Third Adam with no music. Third Adam 3X. So I'm telling you, we got a lot of crazy fun stuff to go through here and we can choose with this. We could start with the small stuff and go to the big stuff. We've got so much to do. Unicorn st Tongues, the story of Brandon Barthrop. You guys ready for this? Imps, we've been having a lot of fun. Are you guys ready to find out whatever the fuck this is? Let's do it. In Matthew chapter seven, the Lord Jesus Christ gave certain types of criteria that you could use to show what a false teacher was and how to identify these people. Well, what kind of fruit does Brandon Barthrop show? Now you're telling me to listen to devils at Joel's bar and believe my unequally yoked spouse. This ministry is a ministry of divorce. <laughs> Terrible doctrine. The man literally is teaching that you can get high on Jesus. I guess it's oh, it's oddly. totally legal. Okay, yeah, I mean, cool. Jesus, and when I was a baby, he started huffing frankincense right, right in the crib. It's evidence he was high from birth. This is for real. Listen, I know all of you here, some of you, some of you have not watched Demon Mama before. Some of you hear me say something like Unicorn Tongues, the story of Brandon Barthrop, and you go, this can't possibly be entertaining. I don't know what any of those words mean. But in truth, I always deliver you the funniest shit. So just buckle up and, and, and watch what we're going to have to see, because I can tell you just by the title, I can tell you this is going to be a good one. I... I grew up in crazy Christian Jesus land, okay? I grew up in the craziest Christian crazy shit you can imagine. I've got a nose for this shit, and all of my long-term viewers, they know how much I can sniff this shit out. I can find the craziest shit like nobody else. Just wait. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be fucking nuts. This man actually believes this. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I've been telling people was coming for a long time. And see, years ago, I got so burdened about the Christian rock scene. I wrote a book called Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. And it's available on Amazon <laughs> now. And I told I people that it. stuff like this was oh, coming, yes. that, that you merge <laughs> rock and roll with Jesus. Why don't you just go ahead and merge crack rock with Jesus, too? <laughs> energy uh, 2,000 <laughs> years ago they were experiencing ecstasy in the Holy Spirit and it's been just a common occurrence throughout the entire church history and so the drunkenness is simply ecstasy I never really thought in my life that it would come to this but here we are I love I this guy's bad music for Brandon I, I I think this is this is like so sad that somebody would actually go for this and I just I don't even know what to do this is the fruit of false doctrine. And this is why doctrine matters. I need that silent. Christianity in its purest form is pure pleasure, pure spirituality that benefits everyone around you continuously by positive energy. This is not okay. Okay. This guy's looping piano track might just drive me insane. Is it just this one PN like arpeggio going up and down over and over and over again? And today we're going to talk about Brandon Barthrop and Red Letter Ministries.
Okay. I'm not gonna lie, this guy does look like he's fucking stoned out of his mind. I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna lie, he does. He does. It's the same fucking arpeggio over and over again. Please, please change the music. Now, when I first saw this, I thought this was all a big joke. I thought, there's no way. <laughs> like, this is like a prank. Uh, but this is real. This man really does this. He really makes a living doing this. And he, he really believes these that this is a legit Christian thing. Basically, the story is that Brandon was a, a troubled teen, and he had a very tragic upbringing. And during his childhood, Brandon said that you know his his mother and father had a terrible custody battle, and that uh, his father basically uh, like kidnapped him and his sister, and that uh, ended up having a falling out with his dad, and just the whole thing was a terrible mess. I, I really felt bad for him. So I, I saw the FBI arrest my dad. He did two and a half years in prison. I was always you know really. Um, angry at cops, really angry at my mom. I had been genuinely searching for the meaning of life throughout my childhood, like, uh, you know, trying to find the perfect drug, pretty much. Drugs was something that he turned to as a result of all this. But the life of drug usage would not last very long for Brandon. Brandon very quickly got in trouble with the police and was given an ultimatum. You could either go to prison or go to a drug rehab clinic that was faith-based called Teen Challenge. Do you know how fucked up that is? Do you know that's... By the way, that's a, there's the buried lead right there. That is a thing that actually happens all over the United States. You get arrested and you are given the option, go to a Christian, uh, go to a Christian therapy compound or go to prison extremely common by the way just so you know literally the state giving people to christians and then he went to a a, a place called teen challenge in minneapolis yes as uh, persephone as an australian holy shit what america is the country of cults and this is why this has been going on forever the state being directly in cahoots with Christian ministries is a tale as old as time. In fact, many modern Christian, um, like Christian cults, were founded via their prison ministries, where basically they're allowed complete free reign to go in and talk to prisoners, to preach to prisoners, to spend time with prisoners, almost un un unobserved. It's absurd. And he gives a just an insane testimony during his time there. Now, the way Brandon describes it, he says that it was like an egg cracked or something, and he starts seeing colors he had never seen before. Now, guys, that sounds like something out of a Kundalini awakening or a ayahuasca trip, something that you do in Costa Rica. It uh, doesn't sound anything like a born-again experience like what most historical Christianity has ever described or even the Bible describes. Uh, this man talks about how that uh, this uh, Teen Challenge was a deliverance ministry and how all these people came and laid hands on him and then started casting demons out of him. Oh, yeah. That's another thing that happens at Christian churches, laying on hands. For those of you who don't know what, what he means when he says laying on hands. So actually, let me see if I can find a video of it. Can I just show you guys? Hold on, let's see. It's a, it's, it's, it's what so this is a practical demonstration of laying on of hands in Jesus' name, John Mellor mini, mini, Ministries. What do you think? I was from the Ready? Let's see. And how, how bad is the pain? Uh, is it crunching? Yes. It'll be crunching. She's right. And so, and so once again, if you update, Jesus often laid hands on people. We just lay hands. Now, it's not, see, you don't pray to your emotion. Emotions don't heal the sick. Sympathy doesn't heal the sick. Jesus was moved by compassion, the emotion of compassion, 
And then through faith and understanding who he was, the son of God, God manifested in the flesh as a man. Just he, wait. He was full of the spirit of God. And, and he understood that. And so he said, Jesus, to lay hands on people, <laughs> he can release the anointing into people's bodies. And Lord, I ask you right now, and what I often do, I often see, see you realize some, some, some people need a creative miracle. If it's crunching, often the cartilage has been destroyed or it's been wrecked in some way. Then we, we can pray for a creative miracle that God will begin to create the cartilage and heal the damage. Lord, we ask you right now that heal the damage in that neck, even create cartilage. We ask for a miracle. I command no more crunching and no more pain. And God gets to sleep at me right now. A miracle. See, quite often I command these. Jesus understood his authority. He commanded the waves to be still. He commanded fig trees to die. He he, he, he commanded. So yeah, that is a laying on of hands. Um, now someone here said, um, uh, two, well, there are two comments here. Slytorn said, serious question. Do you think these people are intentionally faking or are they in so deep that it's an involved voluntary physiological reaction? It's a mixture of uh, it's a mixture of both. There are always fakers who are too afraid to be called out or to make an embarrassment. It's the same. Th OK, so these things unironically work in the same way that stage hypnotism works. They use the power of suggestion and they use social pressure to ensure that nothing goes wrong so the people who are the most vulnerable to to sort of fooling themselves or to getting hyped up or to getting very very excitable about these sorts of things the 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 people who are like oh oh my god oh my god they get really excited about jesus those people become visible and these people choose those people because it will create a knock-on effect if you are somebody who's you know sort of a little bit uh easy to fool or maybe not even easy to fool maybe you're just a little gullible and you see somebody go up and they have a miracle happen to them you get excited a miracle might happen to you and then you go up and there's all these eyes on you and there's a guy there and it's hot in the room and there's loud noises and loud lights and he tells you you're gonna feel this crazy thing when i touch your neck and then he touches your neck and you go oh my god i felt the crazy thing and then you go oh and you start to fall over Ada Stardust brings up, and the, if the faith healing doesn't work, you will get blamed, not the healer. If God doesn't fix you, it's because you didn't have enough faith. Yes, exactly. And if you say anything, the community will frown on you. They don't usually immediately oust you, but they will be like, are you having a lack of faith? Are you having a lack of faith? Are you having a lack of faith? Semi Mighty Duck says, true story. The one time I was involved in a laying on of hands, I blacked out because I was having a panic attack and hyperventilated. That's another thing that happened, that happens. People have panic attacks and then they ascribe it to divine intervention. No faith? Let's continue. Uh, which is not the gospel. And as I'm sitting there, I feel like something like literally crack, like an eggshell cracking like in my head and began to see like colors that I'd never seen before. And the pastors came and in the office they began casting demons out of me in the name of Jesus, we bind you. As and he, he talks about how that as, as this event transpired that it felt like electricity was going through his body. It feels like literally 10,000 watts of electricity going over my whole body. I'm literally more high at that point than I'd ever been. And I hear a voice speak over my head. He said, I will make you more high than all the drug addicts, and I'll make them jealous of how high I get you. And I'm... And that he got higher than he ever would before. Guys, this is not the gospel. This is not a born-again experience. And Brandon obviously has never really trusted Christ as a Savior. Hey, I... you can't say that. See, Christians always do this thing. This guy is so on fire for Jesus, and this guy just takes him down. This is a false gospel that this young teen boy was deceived into. Uh, and, and this is why doctrine matters. <laughs> fake fan, a fake Jesus fan. you give these people these false hopes, these false experiences, and you play with doctrines of devils and seducing spirits, you end up with people like this. And one of the things that, that tells me that this is a false conversion, if there wasn't enough evidence already, was he said that, I, that the Bible had no part in that. And I mean, I didn't say any fancy prayer. I didn't like, you know, read the Bible or anything like that. It was just, I got. 
Moses didn't read the Bible. Moses lived his life as an Egyptian when he was met by a burning bush. Who are you to say that God didn't speak to this man? The God is not limited by the Bible. Basically struck by lightning by a God I didn't even believe in. <laughs> now the Bible says in the book of Romans that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if a man's not hearing the word of God, then he's really not getting saved. I don't know what they're preaching at Teen Challenge. Uh, they might not be preaching anything. Uh, all they're doing is casting out devils at this young man. But he says the Bible had no part in this. And this is a tragic, horrible thing uh, that this young man went through. Guys, we know that drugs and all that stuff messes with people's minds. We know all that. But what drugs does to people's minds and bodies Bad doctrine can do that too, even. What? what? Worse, huh? if you will. Now, the home base of Red Letter Ministries is in Minneapolis, of course, and uh, they call it the crack house because Brandon bought it probably <laughs> pretty cheap. <right>? No! <laughs> Oh my god! We call it the crack house because uh, when my egg cracked, Jesus came into me, bro. Oh my god! Oh, it's just oh, it's so good. Oh, I love it so much. How is it like? How how do we? How are we blessed with such wonderful things like this? Former crack dealers who lived in it and uh, fixed it up and now operates the ministry out of this. Um, and, and this literally is a crack house for Jesus. So if you go and trace the lineage, the spirit. <laughs> yes. I can't wait to go to the Jesus crack house. The good Lord's, excuse me. That is the good Lord's crack house. Spiritual lineage of this outside of teen challenge. Who was the mentor of Brandon. Well, it was a guy named John Crowder. And John Crowder is, is part of something called the Sons of Thunder Ministry. And um, what they do is they, they get in what they call the drunken glory. And uh, the things that John Crowder says from the pulpit are absolutely blasphemous about the gospel and about the Lord Jesus Christ. And here he comes, in his fury, and in his bloodlust. You know, his wrath has to be appeased. His bloodlust has to be appeased. Someone ate his apple, and so with veins beating out of the side of his head, face beat red, he's about to release his wrath on you, and then... Oh, Jesus steps in, good cop, bad cop. I am so fucking glad I'm not a Christian anymore. Dude, churches are straight up the most painfully socially awkward places to ever exist. Not only, like, not just the ones that do the fake laughing thing. Not just the ones that believe that, like, um, th like they do a laughter. They do fake laughing when they're, take when they're, like, taken of the Holy Spirit. Not just those ones either. There is so many churches that entire thing is just perpetually generating uh social awkwardness to pressure you into getting deeper into their industry it is so fucking wild not to mention these guys the ones who do the fucking god laughter i've been taken by the holy spirit if you go watch Third Adam 3X, you'll understand what Gnosticism is. And these people practice a form of Gnosticism. These people are self-proclaimed mystics. And what these people do is, is not the gospel. This is not the death, burial, and resurrection. This is not repentance of sin. Uh, this is not justification from your fallen state. This With all due respect, you're a YouTube streamer that gets mad about Pixar movies. I don't think that's the gospel either. I don't think God spent a lot of time thinking about like whether Pixar movies were too SJW or not. Is just get high on Jesus and let's get drunk on the Lord, uh, guys. This I, I I'm I'm blown away over and over again, just how insane all of this is. Now the website that they have up is 
is a mess. I mean, just the things that they practice on here. Uh, you know, there's uh, just there's all kinds of oils that you can buy uh, that you can sniff and uh, and get some sort of ecstatic feeling from all that. Um, and and just the website looks like like this looks like it's a joke, but th they're really doing this. Now, a while back, we did a video called the Morning Devotions with the Unicorn and Tongues, and uh, we made a joke about this. But truth be told, this is this is a very sad deception that this guy's into. Now, a lot of people enjoyed the video, and a lot of people laughed because because this stuff is laughable. No incense. Like if I didn't know any better, I would say this is like a Jim Jones cult. But this is real, and some would argue says the guy who screams about Pixar videos from his like underground studio, his windowless underground studio, where he regularly talks about how kids should always have to do anything their parents tell them. Dude, you are really not in a position to be throwing any insults around. Argue and say, you know, what's the big deal here? Why would you make a fuss about this guy? I mean, it isn't. I get you. I mean, he's, he's got a Lanigo, drug background. Lan Lanigo Miscellaneous from the YouTube chat. I think I have a trauma response whenever I go to church. I've been getting a strong feeling that I shouldn't be there. I only go now because of my mom. A lot of people become traumatized by churches because some churches are fucking ridiculous and they deliberately embarrass people. They deliberately put people in front of crowds to pressure you into religion. I, 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 I feel for you so much. I know I would never step back into my fucking home church ever again. No one could get me to go in there unless it was literally me for my own curiosity. He's using drugs to try to uh, tell people that there's a bigger high that you can get. And, and some would argue that. But the truth is, is that True, this is Posadis the John. logical progression that you go down when you try to Christianize everything that's worldly. We have Christian rock. We have Christian rap. We have Christian hip-hop and Christian techno. Uh, you know, some would even argue that most Southern gospel today is Christian country music. Uh, but we, we take the flesh, fleshly things, and we try to make them spirit. Uh, then, then this is what happens. This is a logical progression of this thinking. And not everything that gives you an emotional high is the Spirit of God. That's not true at all. And the, the, this is, in some ways, I think Brandon is a victim of preachers who will not tell him the truth, who will not stand for what's right, who will not tell him that this is not how this works. God is holy. God is not just another substance in a line of substances that you use to get some sort of high feeling from. I mean, to be fair to unicorn tongues, that guy seems like he really does believe that Jesus is the best high. Like, he seems pretty committed to that idea, dude. God is a completely different... Ada Stardust says, My childhood church pressured 13-year-olds to speak publicly in front of the whole church and read a personal essay declaring their belief before they're confirmed. It's predatory, truly. I agree. That is predatory. And that's the type of stuff this guy is okay with. He's very mad because this other guy is not doing the right aesthetics. But this guy, I guarantee you... This guy has participated in that type of shit so many times. It is so common in Christian fundamentalists in evangelical churches in America to literally force kids to to be in front of thousands of other co uh, members of the congregation in order to make them state their faith. It's fucking wild type of entity altogether god is holy and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and for us to try to get high on jesus that, that that's just that's that's insanity that shows a fundamental misunderstanding of who god is and what god wants actually it's really funny it's really funny um one of the it, modern christians modern american christians love to downplay the in, the involvement of fucking substances in in uh in, in the, they like to downplay the use of substances in early christian uh worship but let me tell you something if you look into early christian fucking worship 
These guys were rolling all the fucking time. These guys were eating fucking mushrooms. They were fucking huffing opium. It's fucking nuts. And yeah, they were probably smoking weed too, seeing as how weed's been around for a long ass time. Uh, there were in the Bible itself, there are numerous descriptions of, of, uh, entire congregations losing their minds and babbling and seeing colors and spitting fire. You don't think there was any substances involved? There was objectively wine involved. Christians will be like, don't do drugs and then take the book of revelation, which was almost assuredly written by a guy who was tripping balls. At face value, yeah. AKA the Ruach HaKadosh, the breath of life. And so Adam received this honey blunt from the father. He got the secondhand smoke. <laughs> no! You've got to... <laughs> the... And God passed Adam the honey blunt. Oh, oh my God. This is so fucking golden. Now, we did try to reach out to this Red Letter Ministries for an interview and maybe put it on the radio station or something like that, uh, that we didn't get an answer. But uh, we, Who knew that Jesus vaped? We did try to reach out to these folks and try to get some understanding. Now, truth be told, he, here's the deal. I... I from from the interviews I see and the things I see going on, I like Brandon. I, I like him a lot. I, th I think he's if, if things were different, him and I'd probably be friends. Um, he's a very likable guy. But what he's into and the things that he's promoting are complete insanity. Like, I think we've gone beyond just rank. I want to see a Christian church that at the end of every prayer, they just do a dab. It's like... Theological error into the tr territory of this is lunacy. Like, this is probably the biggest. Like, I, I, I still can't believe that people think this is real, but it is real. And he really believes this. And he really is practicing this. Now, the website says this uh, Apostle Brandon Barthrop, born in Seattle, August 6th, 81. Brandon led a crazy rebellion. Why is it all. You know, it's always Seattle people. This checks so hard. The fact that this guy's from Seattle, that checks so fucking hard. His life of drugs and violence still radically finding Jesus after being court ordered teen challenge saved in October 99, filled with the spirit in January 2000, five years of Bible college, then launching out in the apostolic ministry in 2006. And uh, so there he is right there. And then there's, there's a lady named Rev Born and raised in Ohio, Rebecca first remembers the Holy Spirit coming out of her and wrapping her like a blanket as a baby, protecting her from the demons surrounding her crib. She encountered God in his cloud and was saved at age 12. After powerful, continual experiences in the realm of the Spirit her whole life, Rebecca received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in 2017 and joined the Red Letter... Me I mean, the Red... The Red Letter Ministries team in 2019, Rebecca moves powerfully as a razor sharp seer prophet. After a decade of training in obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit as a servant to the people in the hospitality industry, growing in grace and favor with God and man, God the Father revealed his crystal heart to me visibly in my room on Valentine's Day of 2010 while I was waiting on the Lord, filling me with his overflowing divine love. I then began encounters being caught up to heaven, meeting saints in the cloud, meeting being visited by angels. Oh my fucking God. I need Rebecca to visit Vernick, this who works sometime. with him, and then there's his wife, missionary Penny Hope, and uh, she's the one who sings a song where it says like Jesus is like crack. Please, please play the song. If all you can do is just burst, you can, you have to burst <laughs> when you're touched with pure love, pure joy. You know, straight crack. <laughs> And she's like acting like she's stoned <laughs> while she sings. And a bunch of Let's <laughs> see, I mean, it's, it's March 1st, and this was posted February 28th, uh, right there. 
won't relent until you <laughs> have it all. Now in Ezekiel 44, the Lord gives an outline here for some Levitical priests, <laughs> code of conduct, things that they have to do. And part of their job as priests before the Lord was to teach the people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And so when we think of things about Brandon and Red Letter Ministries, we have to ask the question, who's, who's, who's responsible for this? And I think there's plenty of blame to go around. Of course, we know that Brandon is responsible. This guy reminds me of, of fucking Ethan Klein so much. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. Doesn't he look like Ethan Klein, but like if Ethan Klein was a Christian? Oh, wait. Yeah. Responsible for his own decisions and the things that he believes. And uh, he has his own standing before God. He'll have to answer for all that. But there are, there are, you know, he's just one of many people who are going into all kinds of literally insane things like this. So who's the blame? Well, I would say that the people out there who do not preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ are to blame. The ones Chris, who the say, Christian well, just up. pray a prayer and just make a decision for Christ without any repentance, without any faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, this guy's got the fucking curious George man with the yellow hat fucking drip right now. I love it. He's about to go find curious George for Christ without any repentance, without any faith in digging the Lord it. Jesus I'm digging Christ, it. without I'm any understanding it. of justification, uh, you people are the ones to blame. I would say the ones to blame are preachers who use wicked means to accomplish a spiritual goal without thinking what kind of devastation and destruction that will do to the next generation. I would say they are partly to blame for this. Who else is to blame? Well, I would say it would be pragmatic preachers who are using whatever they have to use just to get people into the door thinking that getting people into a building is the measure you yell about disney movies on the internet who the fuck are you to say that other preachers are being too fucking low brow dude of ministerial success, I would say that those people are to blame. I would say that the people to blame here are those who preach deliverance but don't preach the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I, I believe demons are in people, and I believe people are demons. Oh, semi-mighty duck, you don't have to worry about him echo posting. Don't worry. When we watch his conspiracy videos, he will be very open about his thoughts about Jewish people. I'll tell you that much. Don't worry, when we watch his conspiracy videos, you'll see. Yes, but I don't think God has necessarily oh, called yeah. the church to go out and cast out devils. I believe Same God fucking has arpeggio. The to I love the it. Gospel to every creature, uh, and and if we're doing that, then all that demon stuff will take care of itself. Uh, I would say that they're to blame uh, because they're preaching a false gospel because they're changing the goalpost on what sin is. Sin is no longer a, a choice that you've made. Sin is no longer something that's inherently a part of your nature. Sin is a spirit that overtook you. And instead of repenting from sin, now you need to be delivered from a spirit. Uh, they are to blame when it comes to people like Brandon. Uh, who else is to blame for this? Well, I would say every carnal uh, worship pastor who won't take a stand against bringing wicked flesh fleshly music into the music program of the local church. People like you are to blame for guys like Brandon. Uh, who else is to blame? Well, I would say that the spirit for m music leaders in Minneapolis who have what is flesh? Okay. First of all, fleshly music straight up sounds like some sort of slanesh, like, like straight up, like pipes made out of human spines kind of shit. I fucking love Christians talk about the most psychotic shit, but they always mean it in the most boring way. You see, if like Lovecraft or like or like FromSoft wrote about fleshly music, they would mean like a horn made out of human lungs or something. What he means is what he means is if you listen to ACDC, you're going to hell. That's what he means. When they say fleshly music, when they say uh, music of the flesh, they don't mean fucking cool eldritch shit. They just mean like, oh, you listened to the Dixie Chicks once and you're fucked. You're toasted. God's going to roast you for that. 
not reached out to Brandon and said something to him, just kind of pat him on the back and said, well, whatever he's doing, he's just doing it for the Lord, so it must be good. Uh, reckless statements like that by ministers who know better are to blame for this. And Brandon, I don't even know if I could help him. I don't even know if we could try to teach this guy the truth. But what we're seeing here on this website is absolute just blasphemy. Oh my God, I love what this. We're seeing here on this website. Wild, drunken, glory, mushroom dealer from the third heaven Garden of Eden. Watch Jake's Neverland Glory Acid show every day on RLM TV. These Christians, they these are the Christians that hacked the system, okay? I, I'm here for these red letter ministry guys. These guys are the ones that figured it out. They realize that Christians are just bullshitting constantly and that they can just be like, yeah, God told us to do fuckloads of drugs. This is the, this is the most intelligent fucking Christian ministry that you've ever seen. They fucking hacked it. Is absolute just blasphemy. This is a mockery of Vape who God nation. is. This Vape is a nation. mockery of the nature of Christ. And I mean, I, I, if you were to put the first century Christians in a time machine and bring them back, I mean, bring them to now and show them this, they would, they would not even call these people Christians. They wouldn't know what they were looking at. Obviously, they're not going to call them Christians. They wouldn't know what you were showing them. You'd be like, look at this fucking, look at my Twitter account. And they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is insanity. This is lunacy. But this is the fruit of pragmatic neo-evangelicalism that accommodates sin. You can't just... Pragmatic neo-evangelicalism? You're just... You're... Bu Hey, this guy's plagiarizing off of fucking Jordan Peterson's neoclassical Marx, postmodern neoclassical Marxism or whatever. He's fucking, this is plagiarism. And, and fails to preach the true holy nature of a holy and righteous God. This is their fault. The road to compromise is paved with good intentions. Most preachers, they don't mean anything malicious when they compromise. Listen, all I know, everybody, listen, all I know is that if Jesus passes me the honey blunt, I'm going to fucking hit it. I'm going to fucking hit that shit. Aren't you? Do you really think, does, is, does Spencer Smith really think, does this fuck does this little fucking thumb looking asshole think that he has the balls to tell God no when God passes you the boof? Compromise Bible truth. They do you know do you know what the THC content of heavenly weed is? To help. But they always end up hurting the cause uh, I of blow Christ. Some neostatic. I'm sorry, man. I want every again? youth pastor who thinks he should turn a blind eye. <laughs> Flesh music, vape nation. <laughs> this is a this is a good meme to summarize this video. To be completely honest, the sin in the youth group to look at this video. I want every pastor to look at this and think: if I let this music in my church, you might this be right, is Sam the Demand. generational effect of this. Now, it may not happen in your lifetime, but this is the road that you're sending your grandchildren down. I want to go watch this guy's video. This is next. apostasy. This is false doctrine, and doctrine matters. And the reason doctrine matters is because who- Okay, remember, this guy just told you doctrine matters when this guy is a freak offshoot cult that talks more about the divine feminine than anything else. So this guy's like a conspiracy dude who's trying to tell you that he's the doctrine guy. Do you really think that the guy making fucking, uh, making fucking, uh, whiteboard, uh, fucking red, uh, red string all over the fucking walls being like, oh, the divine feminine is out to get, do you think that guy really cares about doctrine? You want to know who has doctrine on their side? The Catholics. The Catholics are the only ones who win in a doctrine battle. Only the Catholics. The Catholics are the only ones that win that battle.
I'm serious. Those guys have fucking a thousand years of archives. They have fucking million dollar archival technology designed specifically to preserve the finger bone of a saint that died in fucking Crumbledon in some random ass fucking uh, British island in fucking 1722. Are you kidding me? The Catholics will win. Who God is matters. This man is a false convert who believed a false gospel and now has a false ministry and is leading people astray and away from the truth of the Word of God. I'm the internet. <laughs> But I think there might be a place. What's going on? But Brandon is not alone in this. He is one of multitudes of false teachers who are deceiving others because they themselves have been deceived too. You know, they'll even say, make it about the Bible, and they'll be idolatrous of the Bible. Religious spirits love to kill you with the dead letter, don't they? They love to control you with Scripture. I don't hate Brandon. I love him. I pray for him. I want Brandon. Brandon to be saved. But I do hate false doctrine. I hate false teaching, and I want people to know the truth of who God is. This video has been a roller coaster of emotion for me. There have been times I've sat there and cringed. I have just scoffed and laughed at some of the things I've seen. But by the end of this video, I was crying. Live by the cringe, die by the cringe, my friend. Today you die by the cringe. Over this man's soul. How can a man be so lost and yet so religious? The truth is, false doctrine and neo-evangelical pragmatism and compromise. Already. You said that already. You has said that already. This monster that you see before you. He's not. You just said it's you a, loved him. He's not a monster. You said you loved him. How can you call him a monster and say you love him? It comes off a little disingenuous. Hideous thing to watch. But that's what deception does to people. Also, this guy's videos only has nine likes. And I want to say again, doctrine matters. Because who God is matters. And may God help us to be true to the word of God, no matter what the cost. Amen.